I'm Sarah Janice Brown and I want to talk to you about how to use the Thinking Tree Nature Study and Outdoor Science Journal. Now a lot of you have recently gotten the PDF version of this for free and it's an introduction to fun schooling and how fun schooling works. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what's inside this book and how to use it. Come a little closer. So how to use this book. So you're going to take this book outside on an adventure with you and you are going to go into whatever natural environment is available to you. It just could be a backyard, a park, anywhere where you have nature and begin your nature study. Now, this is not the only resource you'll be using. I would encourage you to gather whatever nature books you have around your house and in your home library. So I went to our home library and I found a lot of fantastic Usborne books and other books that go perfectly with this. So uh, there is a page for choosing your books. And so you'll find your nature books and I'll show you a few examples. These are all books that would be perfect to go along with your nature study. And I love this set. In fact, I'm just going to show you the inside of it a little bit. This is really wonderful to go along with a nature study. And uh, we're not just talking about plants, but we're talking about bugs animals, rocks, all kinds of things. So the first thing you'll do is you'll bring some nature into your home to kind of get in the mood. So go out and pick some flowers, gather some twigs, and um, just make your, your home a little more beautiful by adding nature to it. And then make a nature study basket. So you'll need a basket, you'll put your nature books and other nature discovery tools in there, long color pencils, maybe uh, magnifying glass. And then the first activity is list the animals that live in your area. And then the next activity is find 10 small things in your yard and make a nature collection. And as you make this nature collection, you're going to begin to research the things in your nature collection. Then we're going to have reading time, and that's when you gather your nature books that you have from your home or from your library and you set aside time for reading and studying in those books. In this page you'll write some quotes and draw some pictures from your nature books. And now we have an activity. It's color me, draw my food and my habitat. So your child will color the fish and also draw what would be in that fish's habitat. Oh. Now we're going to study the clouds and the weather. So draw the clouds and the weather that you would see outside on your own property today. Let's go look and see what kind of weather we're having here in Hawaii. Come around and let's look at the weather. So you would just take a look at the sky and you would draw exactly what you see and then study what types of clouds are those. Now let's come back over here. You can see we have a lot of nature on, um, on our property. So the next activity is called spelling time. So as you can see, this fun schooling journal includes all sorts of activities. It has language arts, it has science, it has drawing. And so here you'll choose a plant or animal and draw it below. And then look in your nature books for five words that have some of the same letters as this plant or animal. So it kind of sends you on a spelling quest. And now we have some science here. So changing with the seasons, draw a, so they can ch choose anything, maybe an oak tree. Show how it changes with each season. So spring, summer, winter, fall. Maybe they would draw an arctic fox. Maybe um, maybe a butterfly, something that really does change with the seasons. Now, draw a picture of your favorite insect. So you could find an insect in your backyard, or maybe you would use a book like this one and copy a drawing out of your book about bugs. Now, research your favorite insect. And then once again, you're going to need 
a book to do that research. Now, nature notes, quotes, and poetry. This is a chance for you to find a beautiful poem about nature and write that poem here, or just take notes about whatever you're learning about nature. So this is an absolutely beautiful book that has a poetic story that goes along with some beautiful artwork. And this would be a wonderful resource for nature notes. Now, draw what you see outside today. So your child will take this book and go outside and draw something that they see. Here's the next activity. Use a camera to take pictures of nature. So if your child doesn't have their own camera or phone with a camera, maybe they can borrow yours or you can do this activity together. And so they'll take photos of things they see outside and then print the photos and place them here. As you can see, we have all different types of activities in this book. And this is just one example of the many books that we have for fun schooling. Now we're gonna make a nature craft. So the child will collect 10 small things from their yard and make a nature craft. And then we have a poem about nature and then they'll draw a picture to illustrate the poem. <clears throat> Next, we'll learn about nature, weather, or animals on a different continent. And this could be a chance to watch a video about animals and nature in a different part of the world. So what plant are you learning about? And then draw it in spring, draw it in autumn, and color the parts of the world where the plant lives. This is a really special plant right here. It's called a clay-eye hibiscus. And um, I discovered from one of my daughter's books about animals and plants on the verge of extinction that there is a type of hibiscus, which is the original hibiscus, that, um, that isn't one of the hybrids. And there are only 88 of these plants left in the entire world. And the amazing discovery was, is that all 88 plants, besides one that's in a museum nursery in Germany, are on our island. And so I began a quest to um, care for and tend and grow more of these hibiscus plants. So now we currently have 12 of these clay eye hibiscus trees growing on our property. And I'll show you one. Come on over. So this is a clay eye hibiscus tree and uh, it makes wonderful tea and we've studied this plant and found out all different amazing things about it and when we first uh, brought it here it was a weak little stick of a tree that was we found the tree in a parking lot nursery in um in Kauai, and someone had transplanted it from the wild hibiscus trees and so now um, we have one of the most rare plants in the world growing here, and that's one of the amazing things about studying nature. So let's see what else. Um, now we have our activities where the child will color a, cre a little duckling and then trace it, then draw the missing part, and then draw the animal. This is a very fun activity. And then there's another reading time page, another color me and draw my food and habitat. And then another uh, opportunity to make a nature craft and draw what you see outside. And so basically from this point out on, the book has similar activities that repeat. Here's go outside and draw an insect in each box. Here's learn more about butterflies. Uh, read a book about animals that live in the water. So lots of different nature learning prompts for you and your child to share. One wonderful thing about fun schooling journals is that like this one, it can be used for a wide range of ages. Your five-year-old and my five-year-old can really enjoy this book, but so can a teen. And um, you are probably familiar with this book because a uh, thousand people or more just got the PDF version for free. But I wanna show you another one of our books before we close this video. Tell me when. So maybe you're thinking, fun schooling is really interesting, my kids like it, and it seems pretty easy. 
And that's one thing that parents really need right now is a homeschooling method that's easy. So once you've explored that nature journal a little bit, you might be interested in growing your fun schooling experience to cover more subjects. So this is the All About Dogs Fun Schooling Journal Do-It-Yourself Homeschooling Curriculum Handbook. Now, one thing about fun schooling is kids do the fun schooling. Kids do the homeschooling. This is not a parent-directed education. This is a child-directed education, and we have over 300 fun schooling journals based on all different topics that kids love to study. And one thing we found is that a lot of kids love dogs, love cats, love animals, and want to be veterinarians when they grow up. So. This is my daughter Laura's book. Laura is 11 years old. Say hi to Laura. And Laura loves exotic animals as well as cats and dogs. She has parrots, uh, we have a turtle, we have cats, and we have two dogs. So right now Laura is using this journal and along with this journal we use other books too. So you'll want to get a fun schooling journal based on a topic your child loves and then use other books to go along with it. So here are some books that you could use with this journal. Now this journal can be used for a child anywhere between nine and 17 years old. It's a really wide age range. And um, when you choose to use a journal like this, you're going to get books on this topic your child's interested in. So, The Dog Training Revolution, uh, The Guide to Raising a Puppy, 101 Dog Tricks, The Perfect Puppy, Brain Games for Dogs, and then we add in other books too, like Personal Career and Financial Security. So um, this book is used to study dogs, but you also add in a few other books along with it. And um, by adding in this book about personal career and financial security, we are adding math to this dog curriculum. This curriculum actually covers every required subject except math. So you'll want to add math and then just a stack of books. And we're just going to flip through this really quick and you're just going to see some of the pages. There are all different activities. And one thing about our fun schooling journals is that kids will go back and forth between academic activities, creative activities, academic activities, passive, enjoyable activities like listening to an audiobook, uh, academic activity, and then maybe a video. An academic activity, then a logic activity. An academic activity, and then a creative or active activity. The reason we go back and forth between creative and academic is so that while the child is doing a creative activity, they can process their academic learning. One important thing that you need to understand when homeschooling is that kids need a break from academics and they need that break every 15 or 20 minutes. So when your child uses a book like this, they'll do 10 pages a day and they'll go back and forth between academic activities and creative activities or passive activities like listening to an audiobook or watching a video. So I hope this has been a fun introduction to homeschooling, the fun schooling way for you. A lot of parents are really stressed out right now because homeschooling is so hard for the parents, but not with fun schooling. Fun schooling is the easiest way to educate your children because you're focused on a topic that they love and you're using a curriculum journal that guides a child through their day. So have fun using your nature study book and consider getting a core curriculum journal from funschooling.com based on your child's passion. Happy homeschooling.